Hey, welcome guys. In this video, we're doing an unboxing of the Roku 4 Media Player. Now, this is heavily advertised as a 4K media player. I don't believe it has any pun in regards to it being the fourth edition of the Roku Media Player. I think it's just purely coincidental. So, going over the box, you have a whole bunch of advertised features that you know you can access 300, a thousand movies and TVs. On the bottom of the box, you have just some uh, you know address information and stuff like that, as well as the barcodes and serial numbers. Over on the right, you have some features that are just quickly, uh, you know, described, what's included in the box, and that in order to get 4K video playback, true 4K content playback um, from the Roku 4 media player to your 4K TV, you will obviously need a 4K TV and an HDMI 2.2 uh, wire. So you can still get 4K playback to your 4K TV, but to get it in its, you know, best content, make sure you have that requirement met. So it's basically telling you that you need an HDMI wire, you can use a Wi-Fi connection if you want, and it just need a TV, and you're pretty much set to go. On the back, you have a bit more features that are listed. You know, it's quick and powerful, stuff like that, and how, you know, 4K is better than 1080p, which is obviously a given. Um, but a lot of these features I'll go over in the review video. You can find a link to the review in the video description just down below. So, getting straight to the unboxing itself, I think we've gone over the box well enough. You know, the box... It's pretty well designed in terms of the amount of details they packed, but not making it look too overcrowded. So it's pretty attractive, you know, catch your attention while it's sitting on a store shelf. Now there's the media player itself, we're just going to place it to the side, we'll get back to that shortly. And here's just some pamphlets and information. All you need to know to get started, and you know, quick start guide. I'm trying to figure out where the heck is that, okay, so that flap was to help you pick it up from the where it was resting. I, I, I was misleading, I thought that's where you have to tear from. Open it up, guess not. So let's get this stuff out of here. Okay, so this is like a quick start guide. Uh, four steps, very straightforward. Plug in your power, plug in the HDMI, you're set to go, and it's telling you that, you know, put batteries in the remote. You know, your, your remote needs power. And um, the next information is, you know, important warranty and safety information. Um, you know, who really reads that? <laughs> I'm being honest, hey, right? So whatever. And they've included some in-ear headphones in the box. That's because you can actually listen to audio through the Roku remote. So if you have any content playing on your Roku uh, headset, you can play it through, um, sorry, on your Roku media player, you can play it straight to the earphone headset through your remote control. So the rest of your room is silent. You won't wake up anyone if they're taking a nap or something. So the headphones are not that long. I just measured against me, it's about just over three feet. Um, so you have some other ear in-ear headphone adapters it's kind of a tug twister there um, in case you have different ear sizes you know the standard fitting doesn't work you can change it there's two AA batteries for the remote control so let's get the remote control out of its packaging get that stuff off and this is a nice little remote you know it's a nice and compact uh, it's quite comfortable to hold in the hand you know due to the size especially and you have the indentation at the back top uh, noticing some volume controls this is most likely for the headphone control um, so there's a weird little flap at the bottom, I, I don't know why you would need that. And there's an OK button and there's some quick, you know, app shortcuts it looks like. Radio. I think radio is dead. Uh, hasn't it been, you know, taken down, the service? I, I could be mistaken, but whatever. Surprise Spotify is not there. Weird. You know, it's much more popular. Oh well, whatever. Okay, so here's the power cord itself. It's not a massive brick, uh, I wasn't expecting one, it just looks to be a pretty compact media player so I don't see why it would need such a big brick to connect. So I'm just going to bootleg the measurement, just kind of put it against me, just, you know, from the floor up, see how far it goes, and it's measuring in it just under 5 feet, just a little bit under 5 feet roughly. Uh, so a pretty decent length, nothing special, nothing bad. Uh, it's a nice little Roku label there. So let's get that out of the way, that's done. And the box, let's get back to the media player itself, you know, the main part of this video. I usually say the best for last, right? So where do I start? Where to start? Okay, let's start there, which didn't help. Okay, so let's try this again. Gonna try getting at it. Nope, it's not working. I don't I don't understand why I had to seal it this tightly with plastic. Um, kind of weird, but okay, sure, whatever. Every manufacturer does this for almost every piece of tech. I don't see how it protects it that much by sealing it on that tightly. It's just super thin plastic sitting in a box that's not going to nudge anywhere, but sure. 
make it annoying. <laughs> anyway, like I said, all tech manufacturers do that. So this is not the most uh, compact design for a media player. I have seen smaller, say for example the Western Digital Media Player, but um, I'm wondering if the sides are a dust magnet. Um, I, I could be wrong. I mean, it's on the sides at least. If it was on the top, the same glossy material, then it would definitely be a problem for a dust magnet. But if it's on the sides, I don't see it being issues, so I won't even like go over that. Um, I'm interested as to what this does. I'm not really sure. Looks like a volume control button. It's kind of weird. But on the back, okay, we have an Ethernet port. Great to have on a media player. That's one of the main things I look for. And it uh, looks like to me micro SD card slot. Interesting. So there's a factory reset button on the bottom. Um, that's pretty much it. And there was a USB port on the right. So I'm interested to see. Uh, let's see. Here's my Galaxy Note 5 phone. Just a little bit smaller than the length and the width. Just by a tiny bit. But it has a slim profile, the, uh, the the body itself. It's not too high, so it's pretty interesting. So be sure to check out the review in the video description. Hit that like button, it does help. Subscribe, and thanks for watching.